so the momentum pointed so to the um to the left. this is where i'm just describing um the precession phenomenon in terms of the pre-existing angular momentum and the torque uh, due to gravity that's changing the direction of angular momentum and i think here so you know i describe the um, the conceptual portions of it and what i don't have enough time and end with is um do, doing a more quantitative estimate of so given all this uh, model what is the rate of precession that's uh, uh, what i normally do and in most semesters i would have done but i think uh, this semester somehow i ran out of time to um, uh, finish covering that. I think as I got as far as uh, demonstrating that um, when the wheel is uh, spinning slowly, then then it processes more quickly, uh, kind of at a more descriptive level. But uh, I, I think this demo is more, um, uh, you learn more from it with a quantitative estimate. So, so that's what I would like to do. And um, I had this in my plan for a, quite a bit. So I think last semester, I even recorded the, because, you know, in this video, the kind of the quality of the pre-session that you can see it's uh, limited. So I uh, did record this set of videos to do that specifically. And, um, and I, didn't quite um, haven't done anything with this other than recording it. So 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 let me do this. Uh, I think um, there's a set of um, demonstrations here. I think I can kind of talk through it. So this one is just showing um, what happens if you just let it drop. Then the thing that you expect to see if you see an object that's uh, kind of hanging um so i initially studying us having to support the sorry i'm trying to uh, ha having to support the the right side of the right side yeah from your view right side <laughs> from how i was holding in my left arm <laughs> um right side the, of the wheel having to be supported and when i let go of the uh, right side then it does the thing that you would predict that it does it falls down and now um, in the lecture i show how uh, this can be described in terms of the using the cross product uh, with the uh, torque so the kind of the torque that the gravity is exerting on this wheel as it uh, so so kind of the torque that the gravitational force is exerting on this wheel. You can describe it this way. So using this as the point of support, uh, gravitational force, we, it, we treat it as acting at the center of mass. So this uh, gravitational force, it's exerting a torque. And this is my displacement vector R and uh, the full vector expression for torque is given by torque is the R cross product with the gravitational force. And for this cross product, you use right hand rule. So you do R cross F. Um, so the direction of the thumb, it's pointing into the screen. So, um, so, uh, so that, yeah, pointing into, I'm <laughs> trying to compare your view with my view, pointing into the screen. So what they would describe is um, something that's moving, uh, uh, spinning, uh, rotating uh, clockwise in the plane of the screen. Let me just make sure that makes sense from my point of view as well. And, and that's what you see when you see me uh, just to drop this, the way in which the uh, wheel is spinning, it, or <laughs> spinning, it's uh, consistent with the clockwise rotation, which uh, I didn't know the direction in which the wheel is spinning, it's a consistent with a, a clockwise rotation, which is consistent with torque pointing into the screen. So, so you know, that's uh, all kind of something that you are um, used to seeing, just to uh, describe it in a more uh, kind of fanciful vector language. Um, now that 
a vector language is useful for something like a precession motion, which is a um, very unintuitive motion the first time you see it. And when you try to analyze it, it's also challenging. And um, so in the uh, lecture, what I, the way this is described, let me try to pause this at the right moment and try to replicate the lecture description. So I think the way in which the wheel is spinning, I, if I'm remembering how I saw it spin, it's spinning so that at the top, it's spinning toward, the top of the wheel is coming towards you and the bottom of the wheel is moving away from you. It's uh, kind of rotating this way. Um, so with that sense of rotation, um, the, the angular momentum of this wheel, the original angular momentum, it's pointing this way. That's the, well, I can't quite see that. Let me just, uh, angular momentum is pointing, uh, sorry, uh, it's gonna change the color of the pen. Um, the angular momentum of the wheel is, is uh, pointing that way. Let me just to make sure that it makes a sense from my perspective. So, so that's the angular momentum that the wheel starts out with. And the forces that we are describing earlier. So we have this pivot point, center of rotation, and we still have the same gravitational force acting at the center of mass. and the, or we treat it like connecting at the center of mass. This is my the displacement vector R. So the torque that we had before, you know, R cross F. So torque is still pointing into the screen. Um, so something like, so the torque due to gravity would be uh, represented by something like this. Um, that's still there. And what was described in the lecture is this uh, relationship between torque and angular momentum. Torque is the rate of change of angular momentum. There's an, um, there's an analogy to how the force in linear motion is the rate of change of momentum. And this description is useful because Knowing this uh, torque allows you to uh, predict or anticipate or describe the change of angular momentum. So, you know, let me just quickly rewrite here. So from this torque, the some amount of change of angular momentum per time, I can solve this for change of angular momentum. That's uh, amount of time times torque. So what this saying is the change of angular momentum is in the same direction as torque. So this uh, initial angular momentum that we start out with, it's going to have to change in a direction so that it points, uh, the change is pointing into the screen. And what the change will amount to is that this end of the wheel will be pointing, uh, it will be spinning uh, or rotating or possessing uh, in a direction that's uh, into the screen or, yeah, into the screen. And when I let the video run, that should be what you see. Yeah, it's uh, now pointing into the screen. And here's the thing that leads to that fascinating, interesting motion, processing motion as the wheel itself uh, spins all that arrangement of the torque and the angular momentum, it, it, they all kind of change in three-dimensional space. Uh, what remains constant, um, the kind of relative relationships that don't change, is that the torque rem gra gravitational torque remains perpendicular to angular momentum. So the direction of the angular momentum keeps changing in a perpendicular direction from where it was pointing before. And the magnitude of angular momentum isn't really affected. So, so all of that is, I think, enough detail to um, kind of draw this picture to help us um, come up with an analytical expression to um, 
to predict uh, what is what should be this precession rate there. So we have this uh, uh, model or picture of the precession motion. Let me just go back a little bit. Uh, some error here. Oh. This uh, model of precession motion. And let's uh, just uh, put some numbers down so that we can uh, predict this precession rate and compare it to the experimental value that we can measure from this video. So I need to draw some pictures here to help me sketch out that derivation. So um, what I'm going to draw, the main view that's useful to me is the top view, especially as, as I diagram the, the uh, angular momentum vector and the torque vector. So imagine looking at this wheel that was spinning from the top. Let's say this is the point of the support. And I'm just going to use that to anchor all my, all my vectors. So we have the angular momentum vector that started out pointing to the right, imagining uh, kind of uh, viewing that wheel from the top as seen in the video. And um, this uh, tip is going to trace out, uh, trace out this circle as the wheel processes one full turn as I see it from the top. One full turn, I guess, turn counterclockwise. That's a, uh, uh, and, and this is consistent with the direction of torque. Um, the, from the discretion of the forces that I gave just a, a couple of minutes ago, the direction of the torque due to gravity uh, works out so that it's pointing this way. And, and at some later time when the wheel and the angular momentum is pointing this way, uh, let's say later, then the forces will have also relatively changed the direction so that torque is pointing this way again. And um, so the role of torque is that it, uh, it induces this uh, or it causes this uh, change. Um, this uh, change of angular momentum, that's going to be the torque times this um, duration of time. So um, looking at this picture, let's say we wanted to figure out uh, what is the period of precession, as in we wanted to figure out, um, so how long does it take for this angular momentum vector to make a one full turn and come back to the original orientation. And this kind of problem solving, it's not one of those standard strategy questions where you can go through the kind of the predictable mechanical steps. It kind of takes a little bit of thinking through, um, looking at some diagrams, figuring out how short circuit a lot of that and just give you the answer. So as I look at the diagram I've drawn, what I'm looking at is, okay, um, if I follow this tip of the angular momentum vector, I have something that's almost like a quote unquote distance, um, uh, distance of angular momentum change. Now, uh, it's a uh, uh, quote-unquote distance because it's not a physical distance. But in this uh, diagram where I have drawn a circle of radius of some original angular momentum value, I can describe this uh, circumference in terms of this radius. Uh, so this distance of angular momentum change would be 2 pi times this radius in this diagram, which is not a physical radius, but just uh, the magnitude of angular momentum. So this is going to be the amount of total angular momentum change, kind of measuring this way. And it's happening at the rate of the rate given by the torque. So this is uh, the thought process I am going through. So my torque that's going to be related to the change of angular momentum per time, I have this kind of a total change of angular momentum, not total change in the sense of the one with the direction and everything, but like, a, again, distance. <laughs> it's coming back to original point, but it travels some distance to come back to the original point. So I have that. 
And I'm interested in how much time it takes for that total one full circle to take place. And I have some physically intuitive sense that the magnitude of torque will remain constant throughout that precession motion. So I'm going to use that and say, okay, so I think what that means is this amount of time that all it'll take, it'll be this distance of delta L, 2 pi times the magnitude of angular momentum divided by torque and due to gravity. And when I calculate all this out, this will give me period of precession. So that's the idea. So this is the formula that I've derived for what the period of precession should be from this uh, uh, first principles consideration. Um, this uh, picture of the angular momentum and how that changes in response to the torque due to gravity. So let's uh, um, figure out some expressions that go into this and uh, see what I can plug in. Uh, uh... Okay, so I need to figure out some expressions for the uh, angular momentum magnitude. Um, I guess I could say, well, uh, I'm kind of thinking back to the expression for momentum. That's mass times velocity. So the angular momentum, by analogy, I can say it's rotational inertia times angular velocity. I think the video will give me enough information to figure out this uh, angular velocity. I can figure out the frequency. Oh, so in terms of frequency that I can measure, the angular velocity will be 2 pi times frequency. Um, and I have rotational inertia for for the wheel like this. And this wheel is uh, it's a specially constructed wheel. This uh, rubber um, rim, it's solid. It's really heavy. So I can treat it like a ring of radius r. Then this uh, rotational inertia, it's simply the mass of the ring times radius of the ring squared. So, uh, so that'll be my expression for the angular momentum. Let me just write down the expression that has all these pieces in it. It'll be um, 2 pi times mass of the ring times its radius squared times frequency. Um, radius, I'll have to give you some um, reasonable value. I think it's like 30 centimeters maybe. That's about, the, it's gonna be within a factor of two of 30 centimeters. And this mass, I'm hoping it'll cancel out. Let me uh, write out an expression for torque due to gravity. That torque due to gravity comes from this picture. Uh, I think the best view here is, let's see. Let me see, I think I can, yeah. So the best uh, picture here comes from, uh, comes from here. So the there's the uh, force due to gravity acting at this point, pulling down and the, uh, I have this lever arm that's going, and the torque will be this lever arm times the force due to gravity. So my torque due to gravity will be the lever arm, and this is a, a, another quantity that I'll just have to estimate. Maybe, I don't know, 15 centimeter uh, within a factor of two. So lever arm times the force due to gravity will be mg. Ah, so this is where I will see the cancellation of these two mass values as I plug them in into my equation for the period of precession. So let's just give it a try. So I have for my period of precession to pi times, oh, that's just gonna, okay, two pi squared. Um, and m r squared times frequency. Frequency is what I'll have to measure from the video. Divided by the lever arm times m g. 
so the masses will cancel out so um so i'll have let me just group together all the numbers that i already or let me do it this way um, there are some numbers that are known precisely so 2 pi squared will be 1 so 4 pi squared and g is another I, no, those those are 9.8 meter per second squared um, there are two numbers that i'll need to estimate one is the radius of the wheel and having looked at the wheel before i'm gonna say to within a uh, 20% uh, the, this radius will be 30 centimeters so 0 0.3 meter squared that's the r squared and i need the um, this lever arm distance r and from having looked at it before i'm gonna say that's uh, let me call it uh, 15 uh, uh, centimeters i think i'm underestimating it but that's going to be within a factor of 15 centimeters, 0 0.15 meter. Um, and the final number that I'll simply have to measure from the video is the frequency. So that's my X. I'm going to measure it in the unit of Hertz. So let's see. Let me make sure I worked out all the units right. So I'm looking for final quantity in seconds. Um, so meter squared per meter, I have meter uh, hertz, that's one over second. So uh, meter per second so far. And this uh, G, that's in the unit of meter per second squared. So yeah, it'll cancel out the meter per second and then have an extra second in the denominator, of the denominator that will go up to the numerator. So I think all the uh, units will work out. So, so okay, let's measure the, um, let's, uh, let's uh, so the frequency of the wheel spinning that's uh, what i need to measure from video and i think uh, here i have a um, kind of feature of the youtube video that's uh, good to use here um so just uh, going back a little bit in the video something around here youtube lets me play back at a slower speed that will help me count um some number of turns in a number of seconds. So let's see here. Okay, uh, let me start from here. So, and starting from here, I'm at 0 0.58. I'm just gonna write that. And I'll, um, s or uh, zero minutes, five, eight seconds. And I will uh, count some number of turns and see how many turns I get in whatever number of seconds. Uh, so, okay, one. Oh wait, I think I'm still spinning it up. Uh, let me wait until my uh, hand is done spinning it up. Okay, I think, let me start from here. So that's a 101. And then I'll count how many turns I can get in this video. So starting from here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I got eight good turns in something like maybe two seconds um you know depending on what the next significant figure is i think i could be off by like 25 percent but i'm estimating within a factor of two is what i'm going for so eight turns in two seconds so here the frequency that i measured for this would be four hertz eight turns in two seconds so, you know, give or take 50%, um, as, lo as low as two hertz, as high as uh, six hertz. So I, I think I have all the numbers I need to now plug in the numbers and predict uh, what the rate of, what the period of precession should be. So let me put in four times pi squared divided by G, 9.8 meter per second squared times 0 0.3 squared divide by 0 0.15 now this is the important number times 4 
So uh, the prediction here is that the rate of precession will be about 10 seconds, give or take. Let's see. Give or take like 50%. Um, I'm letting go okay there. So 106. No, I didn't let it turn one full turn. 111. So from 106 to 111, that's uh, uh, five seconds. And I think uh, the way it went. Um, so let's see, where did I let it? Let me do a half turn because I think I did enough for a half turn. Okay, so letting it go there. And when this is exactly on the opposite side uh, or, okay, here. And then when it's exactly on the opposite side. So from 106. Okay, that's half, oh, wait. That's half turn. So four seconds for half turn. So eight seconds <laughs> for the full turn. So so yeah, the 10 seconds, it's uh, uh, pretty close. It, that's uh, within the limit. And we can, um, so I think there's a later vid part in the video where I um, do this for a slower turn and uh, we can see how that goes. Uh, this is just demonstrating how when you spin it the other way, it precesses the other way. I think that's fine, uh, not a big deal. Um, you can you know, draw diagrams for yourself and work that out. I'll leave that for you. Uh, let me advance to the point in the video where uh, I'm deliberately spinning it slower. I think it's somewhere here. Well, that's still the best one. I could redo it, but I think here it will be similar. That will be spinning at something like uh, 4 hertz, and um, this will, you know, the recession will take like 10 seconds. Um, the next one is where it will be um, spun slower, and we can see um, if our formula continues to work for slower precession. Let me slow down and then um, do the same thing as before. I'm just going to count some number of turns so that I can figure out the, its rotation frequency. So starting from there. Oh, wait, I should have written that. Uh, or let me start from there. And we are starting at 229. Let me write that down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eight, twelve turns or so, and uh. 12 turns in six seconds, 235. That's uh, uh, so yeah, 12 turns in six seconds. So it, it, the uh, rotation rate, it went down from four hertz to, to two hertz. So the pre session time, uh, I can just do this in my head. The frequency went there down by a factor of two. The pre session period should also go down by a factor of two, which actually means a faster pre session instead of taking 10 seconds for a full, um, uh, for a full pre session, it's now going to take five seconds according to the estimate. Let's uh, give that a try. Um, back to normal speed. And I have to start where. Okay. So my hand is gone there, starting from there. Um, that's 237. Back to there. 241. That's uh, uh, four seconds. <laughs> so it's uh, within, you know, 50% of, well, even within 20% of what we estimated. So, so yeah, that's uh, how you estimate precession rate. And the, Conceptual descriptive question is something I like asking just because it um, 
you know, one simple question, it can, uh, it uh, kind of distinguishes between people who at least at conceptual level understand the perception and people who maybe don't. Because uh, it, the answer is so unintuitive that when the wheel is uh, spinning slower, it processes faster. <laughs> and uh, if if uh, when that makes a sense, uh, you understood this quite puzzling phenomenon uh, to a degree that a lot of students don't. Uh, it's, it's okay, puzzling phenomenon. So that estimate is what I've been wanting to do. And I had this video recorded precisely so that I can do that estimate and, uh, and let her finally done it. <laughs>